think the first thing you got to take off the board is the Lulu because that seems right, to be right. the bread and butter for Team Liquid, something they obviously have used a couple of times already and have put in a lot of time practicing on. Yeah, you nailed it right there. They also take out Vladimir because Phoenix showed a lot of success with Vladimir mid, solo killing Link last week in the playoffs. There are so many different directions you can take in these pick-ban phases nowadays yeah. that you really can't totally block out uh, everything, but they definitely do target some strategies. It looks like Phoenix bans as well as... I, I consider that Lulu ban a Piglet ban in a sense because it just yeah, his ability to hyper-carry. That's definitely a strategic, uh, specific ban right there. And it's interesting how Charlie even said Quas is probably the main strength for this team, yet they target Phoenix with mm -hmm. a lot of the bans here. You don't always want to pile on all those top lane bans, but there Ooh. it is, the Hecarim coming out so quickly. That is a snowball champion. And it's actually really interesting to me that they decide to first pick the Hecarim over Maokai. Because if we look at the games where Cloud9 beat TSM and and the tiebreaker game against CLG last week. Yeah. And first, Team Liquid. They used first pick Maokai. As well, yeah. All the time, it seemed to be the bread and butter of Cloud9. Reliable point and click tank initiation. Yep. Whereas Hecarim is more skill shot focused, more prone to falling behind but it's also two weeks of preparation time for Cloud9 yeah. and a bit of a new look. That's something we hadn't mentioned is that we haven't seen these guys in a while. I have a question mark on my sheet on Shiv and Hecarim for balls, and it's surprising to see him bring it out here. First time for this split. So we'll see now what Team Liquid answers with. With a Tanks. couple of Cinderhawks is what they <laughs> yeah. answer with. Uh, a couple of Sion, big boys there. Sion is one of the top lane champions that can run yeah. TP Smite. Uh, he might switch that up. Um, because he doesn't necessarily need to take Flash, especially for his engages. Uh, and Siobhan is definitely going to go mm -hmm. Cinderhook, so there will be at least one in this game. I was wondering how the jungle picks would play out coming into this one as well, because both Meteos and I Will Dominate are very willing to pick the tank junglers. Yeah. I thought Gragas may be a ban or highly contested pick here, but it goes hand in hand with Sejuani. I so feel much like, solo lane focus, yeah. I feel like they're going to end up going with Gragas if they're doing the tank strategy, but you can never rule out Meteos trying to go AD Vi because he's done a lot of success just hard farming on that Well, channel. also remember, one of the really good things yeah. against Sejuani is to have another really big tank on your team to take the Sedge ult. Just be yes. in the front line so the Sedge ult doesn't yep. hit multiple people. If you just stand in front, it's actually really hard to get it through a big tank into the back line. Now they've got the fattest of champions on the front line standing in the way to block it. Nice pick. The skinny ult dodged by the big champ. Plus, worked, Morgana Black Shield on top way. of it. If a single person does <laughs> take the hit, he can even Black Shield him. I like this hover here as well from Team Liquid on the Lissandra, something that High has had some success on as well. Those assassins, he says he does love to favor, and his ability to keep safe in those fights is a big deal because he can get himself into some pretty sticky situations. Taking away the Lissandra from high is a definitely a yeah. very big pick. Um, also because it's fairly good against Zed. And Zed was left completely out of the ban phase here. Yeah. Which you have to wonder whether High is willing to pick this clean in to in a, a Lissandra, in no a, matter of the counter matchup. In a team with two Cinder Hulks, a Lissandra and a Janna, they're kind of daring High to pick the thing Zed. Is, they could also be daring him to pick Jarvan. Because he picked Jarvan into Lissandra mid in their tiebreaker match against CLG. Yep. There were some differentiations in the rest of the team comp, but that is one of High's pocket picks that he has to decide on within the next 30 seconds. Draven Jarvan? Are those the next ones? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that what happens again? Oh, man. It, they need, I think, a little bit of magic damage. I wouldn't be too surprised to see High Corky mid in some aspects of this, since they have physical damage, top laner, tank jungler, uh, they, they want a little bit of a mix of damage if mm -hmm. they want to avoid the armor stacking Scion. Ooh. Oh, so it's Draven Corky, not Draven Corky. So it is. <laughs> now, Corky mid. Again, taking uh, the double AD there when you're facing a Lissandra and a Scion and a Sejuani. This is a, they have a lot of tools for the hard engage Team Liquid. Um, so Cloud9 are going to have to be work really well with the Gragas and with the Black Shield. Uh, to put up a front line mm -hmm. so that they do not just blow up Draven. They ran a very similar double AD, but with a Nunu in the jungle and a Corky Lucian. So without that, you don't really need Blood Boy on those guys. Kind of switch it out for a Gragas, you got a little bit more. One of the things that's very rare from a jungler is mm -hmm. disengage. Gragas is one of the few junglers mm -hmm. that does bring a strong disengage to the team. Yeah, it's going to be... Relatively difficult for Team Liquid to engage on that. At this point, 
Pickett's last pick would just want to bring a little bit of reliable damage because he will be getting dove on by tanks as well. Yep. Well, we talk about the team uh, fighting from Cloud9. It looks like they've put together a composi composition to do so. Safety will come to the lanes here of Team Liquid. Scion ain't going to get pushed out of lane anytime soon. Janna shielding Piglet so he can stay safe, and he also can stay on the back line this game as hopefully that synergy is still there for Team Liquid. And the most interesting to thing to me about this team comp is while Team Liquid is bringing a lot of lockdown mm -hmm. and normally the Lissandra Sejuani is free reign to kill whoever you want whenever you want. Right. The fact that the mid laner matchup will be bringing cleanse because he has the freedom to do so on Corky, as well as having a Morgana to block that, Team Liquid could run into some serious issues actually finding the team fights and could potentially get poked down by a Corky and a Gragas. Yeah, we'll have to see how aggressively High does play this mid lane. Um, if he tries to poke Phoenix down early and try and keep his CS low as well. Because yeah. that's a problem that Lissandra also runs into. If she cannot hit her item breakpoints, mm -hmm. she's very squishy. And then she will <laughs> have to use her ult defensively sometimes. Yep, you want to be able to get that out offensively. This is going to be a big one. Looking at these two teams, you ask anybody, they'd probably say Cloud9 coming off the bat. But with the way these teams have been playing, it's a much more even matchup than you would think here as we come into the playoffs. Let us know who you think will be securing their spot in the finals. Tweet at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag C9Win or hashtag TLWin, and we'll be updating the fan vote throughout the series. Something I am very interested to see is with Team Liquid having such a late season surge, will they be able to find where that came from? Will they be able to do it again? Because it did look very good, but is it can it be replicated? Yeah, and I'm again, I'm looking at Team Liquid in the early stages as well because they've admitted that they do not feel the most secure in lane swaps. And yeah, we saw COG true. get leads on them with lane swaps. But they're the team that actually is probably looking for lane swaps this time around. Mm -hmm. If you go normal lanes, a Hecarim with teleport and a Draven in your bottom lane is so scary to play against. If he gets off a home guard teleport gank early and the Draven cashes in, that is one of the most snowball -y comps that you can possibly have here. So it may be Team Liquid actually looking for the, the deep wards to try and get Scion, who's very good in a two versus one. Mm -hmm. And anything Team Liquid can do to try and change this from a normal game they would play against Cloud9. There are so many similarities in this matchup from last year. Team Liquid 3-0ing CLG in the previous round. Mm. Team Liquid going through a late season surge yeah. and having a lot of hype built up behind them. It all came crashing down last year when Cloud9 3-0'd them in the semifinals. But as Peter said, the curse is gone. Yeah, right. They new are team. now Team Liquid. Team. New team, streaks don't count. New breath of fresh air. It seems like they were able to find a bit of a second win towards the end of the season. The early game, safe for both teams here, as they're not even going to cross for the deep wards. Yeah, Team Liquid were able to spread out and deny the deep wards for Cloud9, but it looks like both teams calling the lane swap top. So Cloud9 may be able to find uh, the heads-up matchup here. Lemonation yeah. still hovering around down by bottom. We need to be able to track the early jungle and top lane starts here. Something super common for Scion is that level one suicide camp. That does not look like what Team Liquid is doing here. Strong side invade for Team Liquid. Strong side invade. I wonder if it will get spotted because if this doesn't get spotted by Lemon Nation, then Medios would be at risk of getting counter jungle and he's gonna spot it right here. Right now though, Hecarim is gonna get solo lane experience. Let's see, as Meteos yeah. does head into the other side of the jungle, as you said, Lemon saw the invade, so Meteos knows he needs to try and grab uh, what he can out of the blue side jungle of Team Liquid while nobody's home. That was a re the blue buff. ridiculously aggressive play by Lemon Nation. He ran two people out of that side of the jungle with no backup. This this is actually a pretty big advantage to Cloud9, in my opinion, both for the solo experience they're able to get to balls, and because Meteos isn't meaningfully denied in this jungle, thanks to the spotting by Lemon Nation. Balls is slowly taking that wave down too, making sure he gets all of it, and it's not pushed to the turret here for Quas, so he could have a harder time than usual. Piglet going aggressive in the top lane onto Sneaky with a bit of that Storm Shield on, helps him out. So good aggression here already as Cloud9 a little bit of vision in the early game for knowledge, but not able to work anything off of it. Yeah, that is the one advantage that Team Liquid gains about that strong side invade, mm -hmm. is they did get Piglet a guaranteed early level two. Lemonation slow to rotate, and Piglet next special doing as much as they can to punish this. And that has been one of the big keys to Team Liquid's resurgence, is the focus in 
early game strategy to make sure Pickle gets a good start. Yeah, we'll see where Medios decides to go early on. Uh, because Gragas is one of the few Cinder Hulk junglers that has a really strong early presence. Mm -hmm. uh, plus the ability to hop walls means that he can come at you from different angles. Mm -hmm. uh, up early on in the top lane there, only one Lord so far. Medios already level 3 and fairly healthy. Looks like uh, he is just going to continue on with his jungling though. And a completely unpredictable jungle route. He did bottom side of his own red jungle, stole blue, horizontally across the map, back to the other blue. As far as guessing where Medios goes right now, there's no logical path that Team Liquid can take to figure out where he goes. Plus, since he spent so much time walking around, whenever Gragas is just covering distance on the map, regenerates a lot of HP due to his passive. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got control of both blue buffs, so he can just spam spells. Uh, and the early game really should be dictated by Medios. We'll see where... Uh, it looks like right now he's just going to continue to hard farm. Lemonation and Sneaky all on their own up in the top side here. Evening it up, getting a little bit of lane presence themselves. But man, the Hecarim that we talked about, again, this is such a snowball-y uh, combination. Hecarim yep. plus Draven. Cloud9 is absolutely winning this early game. Yep. Three buffs, four Meteos. Ball's got the early experience, so he is actually able to lane 1v1 against Scion, which if that was a straight up 1v1, could not happen. Plus, Meteos will get the first chance at the gank. Yeah, on the Whoa! Oh, nice. Right Stun. on the list. Level 5, not 6 yet. Not close. Not going to be able to hit it, but dominates there. He's going to be able to counter. Permafrost doesn't keep him in range enough. And a nice counter engage to that jungle gank. Yeah. A lot of HP loss for both solo laners. They'll probably both return after that wave. Very good counter gank there, uh, though for Dominate to be in the right place. Just clearing his wolves and heads straight up the mid lane. Fortunate for Team Liquid. Yep. Uh, but again, the importance of Quas keeping track of balls, he definitely has to alert the top lane uh, when the Hecarim goes missing after home guards are completed. Right now, though, it's just a rush to level two boost. Nice binding. It's a lot of Draven damage right there. Yep. And a also, lot of Lucian damage. <laughs> <laughs> Piglet's completely taking advantage of every time there's a catch, he's getting that Q right through a minion onto sneaky damage. It's almost telling him where to fire each time. He's taking full control. Very nicely done by him. Big special always on the back to get the shields in. And 45 to 37 in that bottom lane as well. Charlie was speaking to you, Kobe, and said Quas is one of the factors they need to shut down. So far, so good. Yeah, we haven't can still get big though. We haven't gotten to see balls in a one versus one situation in such a yeah, long time. That's true. Ooh, very good tornado. Not only does it stop the back, but a little bit of extra harass. We'll see if Piglet tries to push it any further and continue to harass Sneaky uh, as he CSs under the turret. Yeah, it's one of the biggest advantages of pushing this early in the game. Uh, is trying to harass your opponent while they're under the turret trying to CS, and Sneaky just misses one right there as well. It looks like now on the roam. They know that there's no flash on this mid laner. Oh. Thing is, there's no flash on either mid laner. It makes it a, a bit of a battlefield in that mid lane when both guys burn flashes as well as the junglers burning flashes. It means the next engagement, if it happens within the next five minutes of those flash cooldowns, can end up being a lot more bloody. Medios has a bit more freedom, in my opinion, than I will dominate Sejuani just because river control and I think a little bit tankier of a champion for was definitely focused around mid. Already Pink Ward still going down. Dominate's going to be hovering that top side. With Such Sandra as well. Where did they decide to go already, from though. this one? All right, focus top lane so, here. Yeah, it doesn't uh, look like it's going to be both good. Both teleports are available. Sneaky still low they under the turret. The constant here. harass. They're ahead of Meteos on this rush. And the Black Shields burn. They sensed it so far ahead of time. Sneaky, no! he gets out of the ultimate. He thought he was going for the brush. And Dominate just huffs it over his shoulder. Whiffing that one. And they only get Lemonation on that one for First Blood. First Blood pretty big there for Team Liquid, though. Up until this point, dead even between the two teams. So, in response, of course, mid lane shove, trying to deny at least a minion wave. Uh, Quas also canceled his teleport, as did Balls. So they're yeah. also still even on teleports here. Incredibly close game still. One kill could have easily been two, but I can't right. criticize Dominate too heavily for missing that Sej ult because Sneaky was waiting for the Jukes with both Flash and Heal for extra move speed. Very flashable skill. Sejuani. Very flashable. The wind up on that thing. Also Adrenaline long. Rush. He had all the means. Yeah. Everything to get out of it. 
back and forth in this wet noodle fight here in what is the top lane, but we're on the bottom side of the map. Eight minutes in, 70 to 63, so Quas has done a very nice job of keeping himself relevant in that lane. Because Minos was chasing around Dominate right there, a very delayed level six, he actually just got that by taking the small golem by the blue, and Dominate is doing a very good predictive job of this. Lemon, what's he doing in mid lane? That does not look like he's going to be too. living very long. That's what is happening right now. High offers up a Foss Bomb, but it obviously isn't enough. All right. So. Very peculiar move right there. It seemed like Lemon was trying to do a bit of a rotation mid to get pressure on the mid turret, but they didn't keep track, actually. Well, yeah. it's so common for the supports to start roaming after your first back. You'll almost always see those supports roam after the first back, but not the Piglet there. also roamed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Piglet was backing up a special in his roam. So Piglet with a huge lead now for Team Liquid, just where they want their money early on on this Lucian. Uh, this is actually very good news here for Team Liquid uh, to get such a good early lead. The BF sword to try and keep down this Draven. While Sneaky didn't die and lose his adoration stacks mm. in the early dive, he is definitely outclassed in the lane right now. Pickaxe to BF Sword and Long Sword. He is behind by so much. Even just the straight attack damage is 150 on the side of Piglet before the Janna Shield and 113 yeah. onto Sneaky. That is an untradeable lane. Even if they landed Dark Binding, I feel like Piglet would just turn and fight. Yeah, it did not work out for them this time. Going with the matched up lanes, it seems like the duo of Piglet and Expecial has definitely been getting stronger throughout the season. All right, well, we are still looking for that wild card, the early Hecarim Home Guard Teleport. Yeah, Balls does have it available, um, but Teleport cooldown, as we said, was used in the top skirmish, so once that comes back up, we'll see if he can make any moves. As of right now, though, Team Liquid also a lot of turret pressure up in this top lane because of how oppressive Piglet and Expecial have been. Yeah, Piglet is looking really comfortable right now. Tower shot on his lane. way out, though. Going to help out Sneaky a little bit here. Yet. Use this to get another gank in the top lane. Fortunately, not in position for it. You see Balls getting solo farm in the bottom. High could look to open up the map here. Good pressure from Phoenix in the mid lane. Phoenix been playing very well on a versatile amount of champions lately. You can't really tell what's going to come in from him in champion select. He is down 20 CS in the mid lane right now as Cloud9 loses their top turret. Yeah, this duo of Lucian and Janna can murder turrets. Outer turrets at this point in the game are butter for him. If they get that duo roaming, uh, they can easily knock down a few more. Cloud9, though, going to open up the middle of the map. Uh, we'll see if they can get some more ward coverage for themselves. Yeah. Try and keep track of Dominate, because Dominate's got the Sejuani ult as well as Flash available. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like they're going to turn their attention towards Dragon after the top lane was taken. Sneaky solo farm. Cloud9 may just have to give this one up. Their AD yeah. carry is not going to join this one. Early Dragon, not quite that big of a deal at this point in the game, so Cloud9 probably not going to try and fight it. I don't Sneaky think so. solo farm. The question will be now whether Team Liquid can turn this into pressure outside of the Dragon. Piglet rotating down with the huge item Ooh. lead. Now will Team Liquid be able to go elsewhere and take more turrets? Because they have the potential for a really big power spike soon. Quas completing that Frozen Heart before Cloud9 has mm -hmm any magic penetration on High's Corky, they're pretty much just doing physical damage for the most part. And Quas could really become part of a great roaming turret-taking squad with the Jan Illusion to take down turrets and the Scion to basically protect the wave with his body right. from any wave clear that Cloud9 might have. We'll see where they go after this dragon. Dominate getting big now. And with Quas getting just as big, they may want to start fighting, their, starting their own fights here if they have eyes on balls and he can't get that home guard teleport in. They have actually switched back to regular lanes with Meteos now starting to hover the bottom. They want to try to maybe get Sneaky going after having a rough early game. I must be sitting on a huge amount of cash as well. Yeah. You'd say? 2,600 <laughs> right now. He's sitting on only Sheen in lane. He wants Triforce. He's going to go back and buy a full Triforce when he does base here. And that may be the power spike that Cloud9 are looking for, you know, to get back this 1,000 gold that came uh, from the extra two kills here from Team Liquid. Let's see, though. Sneaky still stacking up the Adoration. He has yet to die, so... 
He can still cash in if he gets a lot of help. Wow. Yeah, he needs a lot of help, though. It's it's remarkable how Pick the Next Special have stuck with this 2v2 lane because it is not a winning matchup for Sneaky right now. No, oh, and one stand aside, one binding, a special's gone, and Piglet would be left alone. That's what you expect to see. That's what they'd hope. But the thing is, if you land a binding, Piglet's just going to go right at them. Yeah. And with his... with He has had some superior attack damage, but the, the, the shop gold is actually quite different right now. The power with those two is as close as it's going to get. So when Piglet, you no, sweep a ward like that in Tribush, that's got to alert Team Liquid. That Meteos may be in the area, so Cloud Nine still have to be fairly careful here. Dominate stuck his way into the yep. brush, and because he has the Raptor buff, he knows that Cloud Nine have no inkling that he's down here. Their bottom lane playing so aggressively, though, that uh, Dominate is pretty much just there for counter gank insurance <laughs> mm -hmm. since the Tribush Ward was cleared. What well, would have been good timing? Piglet's out of mana if Meteos did decide to make himself. Oh, maybe he will now. <laughs> I was going to say, make himself part of this fight, but Piglet he waits. Can go back and get an IE, which will be long before Sneaky will have a chance to. It's a 1,300 gold lead on the 80 carries. So that's basically the entirety of Team Liquid's gold lead is yeah. Piglet over Sneaky, which is pretty crazy. Sneaky's the most consistent best player on Cloud9 all split. And because of a little bit of an early game lead yeah. with Lemonation being behind an experience and a nice four-man roam that Team Liquid did earlier, yeah. he's given Piglet a huge edge. Ooh. I, think Ooh. It's, I think it's all going to be about the double Trinity Force spike uh, because just having one on Corky uh, is good for Cloud9, but it's not o enough to overcome the lead that Team Liquid have right now. So they may actually even wait longer for Balls to grab his as well. But again, the teleports are still up. We're still looking for these uh, top laners to impact the rest of the game rather than being on their own island. Scion could very well do the same thing. I mean, we're talking a lot about the home guard teleport, but Scion Ultimate also uh, can yep. force things, especially in the long lanes when all these outer turrets start to go down. I was going to say, they're taking a little bit to group am the amount of power that they have, but it looks like they finally headed towards mid here. Team Liquid looking to take down one of the final turrets as High has just left solo in the bottom one quick. himself. Dominate on full HP, yep. looking to invade here. Backed up by Piglet. Infinity Edge completed. Looks like they get out of that one safely. No vision, I think, from Cloud9 on that one either, as Team Liquid has had the top side of the river the entire time. Able to counter gank Meteos as well on his ganks towards middle, trying to take down Phoenix. He's gotten himself out and two assists for his troubles in that mid lane. Piglet still wreaking havoc here, putting pressure wherever Sneaky is, and he has to respond. I'm actually really surprised. The Vamp Scepter? The Vamp Scepter. <laughs> yeah, from I was I. just looking at that too. I thought for sure he'd be going Loot and Zekko Corky this game to differentiate mm. their damage and increase their poke, but he is going for the AD carry. Corky built, not even Sorcerer's Shoes to go along with his Trinity Force Pike against a team that has two heavy armor stackers. And I think that does signal that Cloud9 are looking more for the mid-game win because... They just want to push turrets. Yeah, because the the Luden's Echo actually seems like it scales a bit better than standard uh, AD Corky build. I would say that's true. And they may want to make a really hard mid-game push there when they do get the double Trinity Force. Well, what they're doing right now could put them as in a position for some wards at least. If they did put one down by blue, that could be a teleport for balls a little later. Meteos here now towards the bottom line. Oh, good poke there. Landed for high. Like going to back off on this one. Luden's Echo or not, the level 11 for Corky is, re is ridiculous. Level 2 on those rockets. Taking their toll on the mage. Who cannot life steal off of the creeps. Piglet, though, put it by shield. This game can life. This game is definitely stalled out. Yeah. The interest there, there's some very questionable things happening with the clown and item builds as well. Sneaky just picked up an Avarice Blade uh, instead of trying his best to finish the Infinity Edge. But that kind of signals to me that they're hoping they don't get a real fight anytime soon. Well, there's a chance has that given them so much breathing can help. Plus, Maybe. plus, it makes you question, is he going to go Ghost Blade Infinity Edge, or is he going Static Shift? Because Ghost, Ghost, Blade. Blade, Ghost Blade seems like it would be less effective, since there's early armor stacking already. Flat yeah. Penetration isn't going to be that great. It's just Cloud9 going in a couple of 
unorthodox directions with item builds, and especially with this Dragon 2 coming up, they're in position to maybe contest. This would this would have to be a teleport in for Balls. He can't even I, charge his home guard. I actually like trading the top turret here for Dragon 2 for Cloud9. Dragon 2, they're not that worried about... Whoa, he goes in for the steal. Mm, close. Almost gets it. Oh, sneaky. Sneaky way too deep on that one. Didn't know Phoenix was just above kill? him. No, he could. Okay. No, he does not cash in on that. Lemonation's about to take one mm. more Q from Phoenix. They can clean this one up as Piglet arrives. He heals Dominate. He stays alive for just a second longer and long enough for the fight to go. Team Liquid's way I, high, running for mid. High's really got to get out of there. Woo! Yeah, that now was... That was very strange for a number of reasons. Team Liquid was doing the right thing. <laughs> Positioning with their power spikes, going for Dragon, knowing they had a Frozen Heart against an AD team, and that they can win any fight that they take. And then Sneaky gets bloodthirsty trying to cash in his adoration, hoping that he gets that, finishes an Infinity Edge, and goes to snowball the game. But everything goes wrong. They were the weaker team at the time. They did not have a home guard teleport to come back in, and they pay the price. Yeah, I, that's why I really thought Cloud9 were going to opt for the trade there, trade that top turret. Yeah. But Midos goes in for the steal, and then they have uh, the Draven initiation. Now, the first there is part. a good... Dominate locks up balls uh, with the Sejuani ultimate early on, but really, special flashing in for the Janna ultimate is what turned the tides of this fight. When Quas yeah. does not go down, Cloud9 get demoralized. They can't clean up the rest of the fight here. Sneaky's already down. All their damage has been broken at this point. And X Special comes up with a huge reset for that fight, saving Quas, disengaging the members of Cloud9, and allowing Team Liquid to pick up some extra kills there. What a huge swing for Team Liquid. Plus, with Sneaky going down, that big cash-in that they were waiting for yeah. gets cut in half. He was around 350 Adoration stacks before that fight, which would have been a very generous cash bonus. And we've, we've seen him get success before by flashing in just to get a kill. We saw it in the COG game where he flashed in and killed Double Lift. But he was trying to flash in and kill a Frozen Heart Scion <laughs> that time, so that did not deliver. Yeah. This one does not look good for Cloud9. Definitely thinking about what happened to picks and bands, how they could have gone better. Uh oh, great picks taken by Team Liquid, thwarting what a Cloud9 could have done in this one. Hi, my name is Piglet, and you are dead. He dies so fast, he actually takes Can they the save aggro him? off of Lemon Nation. Now they can't save him after that one. He went a little too hard that time. Piglet just establishing his dominance. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Taking down the adoration stacks again. Yeah, honestly, it seems like a bit of a foolish move by Piglet because he did have a bounty on him. Yeah. But there was a I pretty think, high I chance think against it was. Lot. You can still yeah. call it that because he used his flash as well. So yeah. <laughs> most of it was the play of Lemon Nation, though, landing the binding and then locking up with the stun. Otherwise, Piglet could have gone in and yeah. out. Plus, they end up getting a turret and they cut the adoration stacks. I actually can't say it's that bad of a play by Piglet. Worth. Definitely call mostly it worth after that one. Most, mostly worth. You can make the argument <laughs> that it is worth. Well, right now he may have gotten the argument of, all right, calm down a little bit. That was a, little, that was a little too hard from That's the team. True. And we'll see if he corrects the play there. Still a good push on the bottom lane and an immense amount of wards for Team Liquid on the bottom half of that map giving up Cloud9, because if Cloud9's also not on that wards, they know they're on the top side of the map. Yeah, and you know, it. they picked up the double train force right after that disastrous dragon fight. The and timing that, just wasn't it, there. It really depletes the... Uh-oh. Yeah. Another sigil, another flash burn, plus they may even still pick up the kill. <laughs> There's only so much you can do, hi. And they also gave it to Piglet. That was... Really nice discipline by Team Liquid overall, yeah. knowing the Piglet is in position to carry this game with their tank team and crowd control. Team it's Liquid is abusing their power spikes very well, and Cloud9 disregarded them, which they are paying for. Yeah, and the, remember how much the first game of the series was talked up, how much it means for both of these guys with yeah, Team Liquid that's so uh, true. being such an emotional team and riding high on the confidence of taking down CLG. Everyone's like, oh, you know, Cloud9 is a completely different story. Yeah. Don't get overexcited. But Team Liquid with a really strong showing here early on, and we've seen how much momentum really does mean in the best of fives. Liquid, though, going to have to do some work to get Phoenix out of here. Oh, Sneaky just can't catch a break. They really wanted to give it over to him, but time to hightail it out of there. Quas doesn't have nah, his nah, ultimate nah, or his nah, flash. Nah, nah. So. He still wants him. He's still going for it. He's just limping along. You don't always get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> he drives right by. What's interesting to note is even though Team Liquid has been dominating the pressure in this game, 
Cloud9 is picking up enough stuff on the backsides. Their CS numbers are very high. Balls at 211 CS to 161 balls. Turrets are only one behind for Cloud9. The two dragons at this point in the game aren't that meaningful until they stack a little bit later or they can continue to deny Cloud9. We've done a lot of talking about what Team Liquid has done right and what Cloud9 has done wrong. But what Cloud9 has done right yeah. is keep the trading in this game alive. Doing it under our nose. And they're not dead yet. Yeah, they're 113 for Meteos to the 87 of Dominate, so he's going to be a big factor in the fights as well as that tank we were talking about. Yeah, Cloud9, they're not dead yet, but they're facing a map that's littered with Team Liquid wards. So yep. Team Liquid have done a very good job of getting those deep wards after they got their lead. Plus, this front line from Team Liquid is going to be so it's troublesome. Massive. A double Frozen Heart front line against the double AD team. And this is not a looted Zeko Corky either. This is a the Blade of the Ruin King early on. We're uh, so Corky far here. away from so Cloud9 picking up Armor Pen as well. It's, it's going to be very difficult here for Cloud9 to pull off the win, but... Uh, they would have to, you know, catch some sort of fight here with a numbers advantage. Maybe get somebody out of position. Maybe like that. Good Boom. start there for Cloud9. See if they can capitalize on it, though. Dragon's up, Baron's up. They have a pink ward on Baron. Baron will be reaching, I feel like. Mito's going to clear it out. The back that's for about it. Teleport Home Guard possibly here from Balls as well to start things off. He's backing with 400 gold. So just to get that health. Crystal. Surprising to me that Cloud9 doesn't run down and at least try and force Dragon, but they did just catch a support. They still have to respect the double Frozen Heart tank line that is Team Liquid. 24 minutes in with double 80 carries and Gragas, they have a lot of control on that area. Maybe this is the home guard TP. X Factor! They were waiting for it right on oh, the Piglet. They get, they get, they get the fear as well. It's only going to be a few more swipes as he copters around. Behai is diving in just to get Piglet. Blocks from Quas as he's the meat shield there. Now back on to dominate in the mid lane as they chase Piglet down. He's oh! going to burn. The true damage drops him. Sneaky finally cashes in, but there wasn't <laughs> even that much for him to get an adoration. And that becomes just a chase. Does Cloud9 go? for Baron. It's all about how much Cloud9 can take off of that one catch of X special. It is all they were waiting together. Now they guard, Baron. But no teleport. So he can home guard up there, but it's still going to be a little bit for oh, him. No. This is the Phoenix, Monsoon Steel. Phoenix has no ultimate. Yeah, but look at how low Cloud9 is. There's no mana on Sneaky. This is a disaster. Oh, the claw goes in, but the claw is not taken by Phoenix. That means his initiation is kind of thwarted here. He stays on the back. Oh, Medios in by himself. Get out of there, oh, man. No, you can still get attacked back there. Get out. They're still going. Baron's hitting people all the way outside. Ball sticks the last shot. Quas again on the front line. A huge meat shield for the team uh -oh. is leading the charge. Woo! Phoenix once again wastes the claw. He's still now with the back line of the team as it is. It's just a back and forth scrap skirmish. Now is it going to be traded off here? Pick up the Baron. Now All this right. is how you keep it. Dominate's excited. coming out. Yeah. Okay. So Team Liquid pretty low from this. The Mine's ultimates. Out of mana, though. I think this is dominates here. No ultimates on pretty much anyone because the fight has been continuous. Balls gets hit. He still has ignite for that top lane, so it could be a kill factor. It's going to have to be the disengage though. Sneaky's going for the bottom wave. Think, it looks like Team Liquid's going to go for the push. I think it's Dragon though because High's out of yeah. mana and right. the Good rest call. of uh, Cloud9 are really low. I think that's going to be Dragon. So they chased him off Baron, but they are going to give up the Dragon. So yes, hindsight 2020, but Cloud9 opted for the very impactful comeback play yes. if they could have pulled it off, if they had more damage, but they didn't really take into account their low mana bars and they seed over another advantage here to Team Liquid. Number three is actually fairly important for them. With the move speed of the double Frozen Heart front line, things get very tricky for Cloud9. Some incredibly bold shot calling, uh, I would say. But I mean, yeah. you can tell that, like you can tell that they felt that inkling of desperation with their backs against the walls and, you know, having fumbled the early power spike, they really wanted to make a big, impactful comeback play. But again, kind of overreaching. They have everything right after they need it. Yeah. The CS lead from Balls is also pretty big. The, the gold in this game is incredibly close. If yep. Cloud9 could have finagled that pick from X Special onto a Dragon instead of that extended Baron fight, they would be substantially more in this game because then they would have access to the bonuses now. Yeah. Team Liquid is faster. They're closer to five dragons. They still have the armor stacking. We're still a long ways from Cloud9 picking up Last Whispers and meaningful team fight wins without yeah. a catch. I mean, Sneaky has gone for that Ghost Blade. It's a very late Ghost Blade to come in, and there's yeah. not many people that have 
low enough armor for that Ghost Blade to have a really big effect. If he does get into a situation where he's got some alone time with Piglet or Special, then yes, maybe yeah. he can, uh, you know, cash in and make it worth, but we'll see if they can actually pull off one of those plays, catch Piglet out, yeah. Piglet out of position. That will take some better ward coverage from Cloud9. Just pinged out by the Raptor camp. I'm pretty sure they did not see Dominate back there. Ball's cleaning up in the mid lane. Almost level 16. He's the only 15 in the game, and that would be a huge factor in the ultimate uh, realm for that next what fight. 30 minutes coming up on the clock. As you were right, Jack, Cloud9 is stuck very strong in this game. The Righteous Glory now finished for Meteos means they're going to be in the face of Team Liquid much more. And Team Liquid needs to control the map right now. Cloud9 has done a lot to split them up mm -hmm. and then try and find catches, even though Team Liquid has pretty good ward control. So Team Liquid now wards around the Baron area. Their side lanes aren't pushing heavily. At this point, Team Liquid needs to deny, sweep, and get the vision at Baron so that they can force Cloud9 into them and potentially win a team fight. They're just still a little desynced on all of their recalls. Look at that. One guy goes back while Quas tries to push top. They're almost playing catch up to Cloud9's map play. Yeah, it's true. The, the small advantage means nothing if you don't perform in the team fight. And the first step of getting that good team fight is trying to gain control of the middle section of the map so that you can actually uh, have the initiation on your terms. They would love to have Quas started off with his ultimate, you know, and chain the hard CC from Dominate and Phoenix. But uh, Cloud9 have done a pretty good job of wrestling back that vision control, getting some true side up around uh, the mid lane here. See if they can get to that turret line. It'll be a nice surge in gold for them as well to keep coming back even stronger. And that is what Piglet and the rest of the team is trying to stop. Piglet, four kills on the board. Here it is. Everybody else has one. This could be that initiation. The dinner bell goes off. Sneaky gets the black shield, so he doesn't really get too much off of that. Just the slow on the end. Then he gets the Glacial Poom. It is going to be all onto him. And Ball's now on the backside. Liquid is nicely on the Monsoon. They're getting all the heal that they need. And Cloud9 can't really dent him now. Piglet has hardly taken even any damage in this fight. And they are going to once again push Cloud9 out of the middle, out of a fight. Line. And Whoa. High dives in, well, no, trying to no. throw down that equalizer we all know so well. Even with the desynchronized initiation with Quas not landing spells and a pretty good start by Cloud9. They could not break through the tanks of Team Liquid. Yeah, Piglet free firing from the back line here on Lucian, able to follow up on the front line from Team Liquid. Piglet has built the pure DPS build for AD Carry. And because Sneaky had to spend so much time retreating and backtracking, not a lot of damage output from Cloud9 after they're able to at least peel the initial wave there. Uh, and it was a good job there by Balls to actually get the ultimate off for peeling. Uh, yeah. and try and get Phoenix out of there. Start of this fight, Team Liquid realized that they had Cloud9 corralled once, so they figured they get a 5v5. They didn't really care about how sloppy the, initi the initiation would be as long as it's all five people right there. Yeah. Again, look at Sneaky at the back of the fight. Can't contribute. High, throwing those little missiles into the tanks doesn't do much, and it's Piglet with the Janna shield free hitting. Yeah, he dashes into the center of that team fight at the very beginning constantly firing, and Kai here trying to pick off uh, a special from the back line nice there. Dukes. That's, that's just, they were outnumbered at the end, and can't pick up the extra kill here for the support. You can Team see Liquid, the, huge momentum swing there. You can see the bit of going for broke here by Cloud9, kind of throwing it all on the table for that first, or that last fight there yeah. in this first game. I mean, it's the game you really got to kind of pull out all the stops. You have the most room to stretch your legs if you're going to do something, so why not try it when you have more games to play with, but Hopefully it's not too demoralizing here within this one because the fights, they're, they're li missing slivers of health on some of the champions and then losing the entire fight. That's why I kept saying it really looked like Cloud9 were going for a big mid-game mm -hmm. power play right. huh? because in the late game here, this is this is the problem that they're running into. Yeah. And right now, Team Liquid no. uh, very securely hold, holding on to this mid-game advantage and actually pressing yeah. it fairly well. And Cloud9 also has item leads in the right places. Uh, not only do they have the strong tank line, but also they have Piglet with the most yeah. gold on the team to bring the damage behind the protection of the tanks. Dragon 4 on the way. It's something Cloud9 would love to be able to stop, yeah. but it just doesn't seem possible. Yeah. I mean, with Boss having to use his ultimate to peel Phoenix off of Sneaky rather than dive Piglet, 
That was the main difference there. The yeah. last time we saw them fight, Balls actually singled out Piglet and had him on the run for the entire time. If he can keep Lucian running, or if he can actually score a kill on them, then maybe Cloud9 claw their way back in. Uh, but Piglet here, full offense, Lucian. This is bringing too much to the table with this very safe front line that he has to work on. Well, let's see if Team Liquid can kind of ace the next test here, which would really play on the minds of Cloud9, is how fast can they close out the game with this lead? It seems like a fight could go in their favor pretty quick and be over very fast, but those death timers aren't too long. Let's see, Team Liquid setting up for those mid fights. They're not actually too worried about engaging their own. They're letting Cloud9 kind of work into a position, and then Team Liquid takes the fight. What a, what a good start for morale for Team Liquid yeah. 2. Mm -hmm. You know, 18 and 1 Cloud9's record against them. Really, really intimidating to even go into a best of five series with that kind of score. <laughs> but last. again, they've got new players on the roster and they got Fresh that blood. resurgence. Yeah, against the, uh, after the win there against CLG, huge, huge confidence for Team Liquid coming into this. And the difference with the way Team Liquid is playing from the regular season, Piglet in particular, and the team playing around him yeah. from Huge. regular season to playoffs, it is night and day. Piglet had awful regular season statistics. He played two thirds of the game, so 12 games, only had 33 kills overall. He had 25 kills last week, six in this game. All right, here we go. This is going to be it. This is the fight. They go in, the vision's not fully there. Dominate gets locked up, so it's gonna be Quas now on the front line. They have those Bass Brothers to keep going in, though. Beautiful positioning by Phoenix, especially in Piglet oh, as they answer Lissandra. this one. Piglet off to the side, do the explosive cast, but he dies right over the wall. A double kill to start off the fight. It's gonna be high jumping out. Balls has already retreated on the fight, and they're gonna be chasing down towards Medios. He's just gonna give them a run for their money as Team Liquid wins another one. Piglet actually got knocked out of the fight, and he flashes <laughs> back in point blank to kill Still sneaky right there. There's no threat on them in no. team fights right now. Cloud9 is trying to initiate scatter tactics now. The team fight game is over. Let's see them run around. It's the Gorilla Warfare strat. Hit and run. They try to get mid turret. Obviously, Baron goes down, which means the side waves are going to start pouring in now. If Team Liquid wants to push the minions, Cloud9, they're getting pushed up back against the wall here, but they're still trying to squeeze out whatever advantage they can. Lost a few members on that one, but they do get away with mid turret. And it wasn't like it was a horrendous misplay that caused the game to go this direction. Remember no, this true. light? It started, off, it started off very slowly with slight leads for Team Liquid in the landing phase in that top lane. Let's take a look at the fight, though. Once again, God not yeah, able to land a anything. little bit of poke, but it does not matter. Quat exactly. head right into the middle of the team, calling on balls. Piglet chases him right out wow. of the team fight and then flashes in to finish off Sneaky and point blank into Lemonation ah, face. Dominate pretty... with that Sejuani ultimate as well, right onto the face of Sneaky. There's no Mikhails on Lemonation since the Black Shield was not, uh, since the Black Shield was not applied for the yeah. Sejuani ult, nothing they can do yeah. to protect. I think if there is one big play that Cloud9 really regret in this game, it's, it's that fight. Dragon fight, where they could have traded for the top turret, but actually decided to force it um, and had Sneaky initiate with the Draven. So I think that is maybe their one regret. I think uh, that's... Look, going into game two here, but... That has to be the biggest regret of all because they did not have the itemization to take that fight. Sneaky, he sold out for a kill and didn't get it. You <laughs> right. know, when that happens as Draven, he loses the game to the other AD carry. That was the turning point of Team Liquid taking over this game. The rest of it has been Team Liquid avoiding Cloud9's catch potential, getting their own catches. And I mean, at this point, Piglet would have to make a catastrophic error to die in these fights. Janus Shield, QSS, yeah. and a whole ton of damage. Yeah, he's literally dashing and flashing into the middle of the team fight, and Cloud9 cannot punish it. Yep. He's only 3,600 gold over Sneaky. He's kind of rich this game. So another 1,300 gold sitting in his pocket that he doesn't really have gold. time to spend all just yet because he's farming more in the bottom lane. The team comes nice. to meet him as they gather here. 1120 crit on the creep. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to push in this turret not long for this world here. We'll see what Cloud9 can do as they put their dukes up most likely one last time here in game one. Ball's going to back off. It's crazy. No engage it's, it's, for him. It's only a 4,000 gold lead. 
but because Cloud9 is so heavily physical damage, yeah. Team Liquid has itemized so heavily armor, and because the gold is in the damage dealers for Team Liquid, oh! it feels much worse. Oh, right over the wall, coming from the Fog of War, oh! practically, and it's going to be the hit that Team Liquid wanted. Cloud9 and the rest of the members looking for the fountain. And the Nexus turrets in the eyes of Team Liquid here. Game one, 38 minutes in, a 14 to 6. Like you said, Jad, the gold isn't Get that one kills. But the map domination, the oh. team domination, and the composition domination here coming from Team Liquid as they try to put the finishing touches on Cloud9 and push them off one last time. I don't think they can finish. Piglet went too deep at the end of that fight trying to pick up the last few kills, and it will delay the game. They actually can save these Nexus turrets. All right, Cloud9 Jeez. gonna hold on here. Two inhibitors down, though. What the anti-win. God, <laughs> I know. They were so close. Honestly, Piglet, if he just focuses the Nexus turrets while all that stuff is right. happening off on the side. He's got a GA. <laughs> Sold this QSS. Very, very rarely do we see the defensive item a GA for AD carries. Um, but Piglet just gonna pop right back up if they ever do catch him out. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't just go Blade of the Rune King. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like it's optimal still, but at this point, doesn't, it, it honestly right. doesn't really matter. Especially if they can get this fifth dragon with two inhibitors down. Yeah. They're waiting for Piglet in case a fight breaks out at Dragon. We're talking about Team Liquid's confidence earlier, and I think trust, especially hearing that in the videos today, was a big thing. That was a big wall for them, because Piglet said, they trusted me, but then he said, then I trusted them. Yes, that's the biggest part. We heard so much early on in the season when Piglet was trying to make his way into the team, yeah. how he would almost make other players second-guess some of their decisions. Mm -hmm. Because Dominate would want to do one thing, Piglet would want to do another. They'd have a lot of noise in their communication, and you can't have disagreements like that in the game. You have to default to trust. And that's what Team Liquid is playing like. When Dominate goes in, Piglet goes right. in with him. There's not that second guessing in this game and in the COG series. Five dragons now, two inhibitors down. Team Liquid pushing inhibitor number three. This one will be tough. The stranglehold now onto Cloud9. If they can thwart this fight, they may have a good chance of bringing it so they can scale hard enough to really win the fights. But it is going to be tough as they pressure the last inhibitor turret. All right, taking that one down very quickly, but Balls goes in! Oh, he does! And he got AoE! That's a lot of damage! That's a good binding as well, so they cannot get to the back line. Sneaky, however, is now oh. in the eyes of Piglet, and it only took two of those passive shots to hit him out of the fight. Medios on the back line. He Piglet can only live him. for so long. The Guardian Angel keeping Piglet safe. He goes deep. The crits are hitting. The crits are counting. And he picks himself a triple kill here as they end the game now. Finally getting to the Nexus turrets without any Cloud9 members on the map. And the Rift is theirs in game one, 20 to seven, 40 minutes on the clock. Team Liquid bring it to game two, one up. And well played from Team Liquid there. Very well played. Not the start many of us expected from game one in this series. All the hype from Team Liquid, if you looked at their series last week against COG, you'd say they were on the upswing, but you also look at the way Cloud9 finished the regular season, they seemed much stronger. Remember, this is the number two seed against the number six seed but it's also just game one. That is true. Just game one, and Cloud9 know where it went wrong that game as well.